Um, today I'm talking about stretching canvases and it's something that is really important. It's the foundation of your painting. It's literally the foundation. Just like a building, if you build it on bad concrete or something, you can build the most beautiful house ever, it'll fall apart. It's stupid. So you never want to buy a canvas that's pre-stretched from a store. They're stupid. Um, and you never want to buy the skinny stretcher bars. So what you're going to get is the heavy duty stretcher bars. You can tell because they stick out from the wall thick like that. Um, you put them together carefully. You want to use a rubber mallet, tap them together. They fit together really well. You want to also be taking into consideration that there's a lip on one side of this bit of wood. You don't want the lip on the back side. I've seen a million students do that on accident where the lip is on here. You want the lip on the other side. That's how you get this space here between the actual canvas and the wood. Uh, so you put them together. You you make sure that everything's in square by pulling the diagonal. So what you do is you actually you measure like this, and then like this. And if the two numbers are exactly the same, that's how you know it's in square. Then what you want to do is you use brackets. So this is my system that I have been doing. I just, I don't know. I've never seen any other artist do this. And I've seen so many canvases in museums and galleries where it's a parallelogram instead of totally nine degree angles everywhere. And so what I do is I get everything put together. I make sure it's in square and then I use these little brackets, you get them at the Home Depot, and they come with screws. Um, put them in the corners, screw them in. Then you stretch the canvas. When you stretch the canvas, um, you first tack the corners. That way the canvas does not get misaligned at any point. Then you go right for the middle. And you staple in the middle, and use canvas pliers. There's different types of canvas pliers. These are good. They have these chrome ones that look nice and shiny at the store. They're crap. These actually pull the canvas well. And you actually, I use these to measure the distance between staples so that every staple is exactly the same spacing. Um, and you want the nub on the bottom side. And if you stretch the canvas properly, you know if you did because your hands will be hurting, if not bleeding, at the end of the session. So that's good. <laughs> uh, Staple like this. This takes these T50 staples. I use 10 millimeter. If you use smaller ones, they can pull out easier. Um, if you use bigger than 10 millimeter, 12 or 14, they may not go into the wood. So they're the best. Um, I cut my canvas with scissors. Um, reason being, if you pull it, and if you're ever at the art store and you're buying canvas, if they pull it, they tear it, it can ruche at the end because the fibers get pulled unevenly and like, it's not good. So this is cotton. That's what you're gonna be doing this painting on. Uh, the other types of surfaces that people work on aside from wood is there's cotton, there's linen, and also there's hemp. Canvas actually etymologically comes from the word cannabis. Um, or sorry, can canvas comes etymologically from the word cannabis. Uh, so hemp is another thing that people use. Um, so what we're gonna do now, because we have one coat on here already, is uh, remove the brackets and then we're going to use 220 grit sandpaper to sand the entire thing and then we're going to put another coat of gesso on it. Gesso comes from the Italian word for gypsum because that's how they used to make it. And yeah, that's it.